Pretty sure our fashion sense has uh, kind of gone backwards since Daryl. Anyway, send me your opening song request. If it's on a beach in a music clip, I'll definitely do it and reenact it. So let's discuss Google I.O. That was yesterday. So I think Google I.O. and Facebook F8 are one of those two conferences that are kind of like the most influential in predicting the future maybe two years out because those companies are massive. They have massive resources and you can predict and see what they're moving to. So there are probably only like three announcements that are interesting. So there's Google Home, which is pretty much like an Amazon Echo ripoff. Um, and clearly that's kind of like, you know, moved towards the whole conversational user interface. I'm actually surprised Google didn't move on that earlier. I mean, the Amazon Echo has been going gangbusters. They've been selling so many of those. And, you know, I think Google probably has a better technology for conversational user interface and machine learning to actually take it to the next level. So what I like to do is with every new technology news is kind of extrapolate it out and look at where it's going. Um, I see a lot of tech articles and blogs and futurists pretty much just report the news and then not go any further. So Amazon Echo and Google Home are pretty much the start of like the Jarvis uh, AI, the house AI, um, where you can, it's just always on, it's always listening and any demand you can just yell it out and it gives it to you. I feel like the end game of that technology is going to be uh, microphones uh, kind of always on in your pocket, like through your smartphone, which you can run in the background, or some type of embedded thing, or some, just some always on you microphone. Because the problem with those de devices at the moment is they have to be within earshot, um, so they have to basically, you have to be in the room to be, for them to be able to hear you. So imagine if we had like ear implants or like earbuds or something that just constantly monitor. And I think the step after that is like to make the conversational user interface less, uh, like you shouldn't have to give it instructions, it should just be passively listening non-stop and then just give you the information when you need it. So like maybe you're pre-drinking at home with a bunch of friends before going out in the town, um, and rather than saying, hey Echo, hey home, book us an Uber, you could just, it could just be listening and know that you're going to go out at some point and book it for you. I hope that idea isn't. So that was really cool. The other one was uh, instant apps. So instant apps basically, it means you can like kind of scan an NFC tag or like maybe pick it up through a beacon and it just instantly opens that app without having to install it. So an example use case was that you turn up to a parking meter and you know it's got an app to pay for it. And so rather than having to search the store and download the app, you just tap your phone against the NFC tag and it instantly opens up a dialogue that you can pay with. So I think that's an awesome simplification of the UX, the user experience of using NFC tags and beacons, which I, the masses really haven't picked up on yet. I mean, we, we tried QR codes, too complicated, and even NFC tags now too and so if that behavior catches on, if people start scanning NFC tags with their phone when they see them, it'll make our phones so much more useful, they'll be so much more dynamic, and they'll be, you know, instantly giving us access to what we need at that moment. Okay, so the next one is Google Allo. Um, it's kind of like a messaging app, so I think they're trying to replace Hangouts with this. Um, disregard the messaging part, but uh, pay attention to the chatbot part. So Google's clearly trying to uh, compete with, like, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. I don't think they're going to get there, because they've already got the network effect. But, so this app has, uh, you can actually talk to a Google bot. If you go look at some of the example GIFs, um, so the Google bot's kind of like just sitting in the background listening to your conversation. So you're having a conversation with a mate and you're like, or your girlfriend or whatever, and you're like, let's go get Thai food. And then instantly Allo or the Google bot suggests a bunch of restaurants nearby and shows them up in a carousel. So you can very quickly kind of pull in almost like search results and local search results and any other data into that chat window. And this is what I've been harping on for ages. I mean, this is why I really, I'm really bullish on chatbots because I see chatbots kind of embedding themselves into everything we, we interact with online and with technology and then becoming full AI. So right now Google is an active kind of uh, behavior, I guess. So when you want to Google something, you have to like go to either their website or you know tap in the inbox thing at the top of your phone. So what Google's going to evolve into next is uh, this chatbot thing, where it's kind of passively listening to all of your conversations and across all of their products and just kind of suggesting information when you need it at like at that moment. I think I did a future video once about um, search engines and being able to like talk to them in a conversational way. And in that regard, that you collect more data about the individual, but you're also not expecting instant and correct answers. The other cool thing about chatbots as well is like they're collecting so much data. I mean, every time you converse with it, it's actually learning. In the back end, it's using machine learning algorithms and natural language processing to learn and evolve. I think a really interesting play by Google might be to actually, um, in one of their future Android versions, just by default upgrade everyone so that their home screen is naturally a message window. Yeah. I mean, this is the play that Facebook Messenger is going after, where you can basically replace all apps with, with just Facebook Messenger and get all the information and all the data and, and connect with all your friends, do everything through that one app. But Android actually has way more users than Facebook, so this is the play they should do. They should just like make Android the chat interface. When you first open it up, no apps, none of that crap, it's just all embedded in, a, in an evolved chat. And the end game of all of this is that Google becomes an omniscient, omnipresent AI that's just embedded in everything and is constantly listening to everyone and is mapping the entire world. It's just everywhere. It is the god. I mean, everyone has massive privacy concerns now in 2016, but the inevitable outcome is that we're all going to be recording 24-7 video about ourselves, like video, audio, data, biometric sensors, everything. The key to achieving that could actually be this whole passive thing. I mean, if we have sensors listening to our, our, our homes, and if we have, like, chatbots constantly listening to our conversations, then it happens. I mean, the more data we can all feed the machine, the faster we build this AI where everyone's a neuron in this global brain, and the faster we can transcend. AI is the last invention humans ever need to create, so let's do it.